Hello, people of God. This is Life Changers Show. God bless you. God bless you for connecting. I'm glad to have you all here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Life Changers Show. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing the Life Changers song. Hallelujah. We are life changers. We are workers in God's fine yard. We are His chosen people. We reach out with His life. session this is a Saturday night you would have loved to be in lots of other places right but you choose to be here well it's not an accident God wants you here and it's for a purpose it's for a purpose glory to your God's holy name and blessings to you for connecting Bless your family, I bless your loved ones, I bless everything that concerns you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about the, the first solution to success in life. And that Solution boils down to having an intimate relationship with God. Hallelujah. We're going to go straight away into it. Why must you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Remember the last time we talked about the three steps of having an intimate relationship with God, your creator. We said first, you have to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And second, you have to spend time reading your Bible, singing praise and worship songs to God, making declaration of the word, choose your friends, make right friends, make a plan, make a decision and make sure you execute the plans and number three receive the holy spirit so today we're talking about the first point which is receiving jesus we're going to talk about it in depth we 
we're going to split it down and break it down for you get to understand what I mean by you receive Jesus. And why do you have to receive Jesus in the first place? And who is Jesus? Someone may ask. So, why must you receive Jesus Christ in your life as your personal Lord and Savior? The first thing, when you look in the book of John chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible states that Jesus is the Son of God. He came on earth to teach, to heal, to correct, to forgive, and more. He died for your sake. He is your creator. He is the sovereign God. He died for your sin. He died for your sake. That's why you have to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Why do you need Jesus as your Savior? Someone may further ask. If you look in the book of Romans 3 verse 10 to 18, the Bible says, we all have sinned. We all all sinners and because of that sin that you have committed you need to be judged and you face the wrath the anger of God the only way to pay for your sin the sin that you committed Hallelujah. The only way you can pay for that sin is it's it's very huge. I mean it's it's a very huge payment because it's an infinite sin. This you have to make a huge and infinite payment. If you look at Romans 6 verse 23 and also Revelation 20 verse 11 to 15 you would understand why you need a savior because you have sinned and you have to make a remission for that sin hallelujah so Jesus came and died for your sin. His death was the only infinite payment for that sin. It was the only thing that could measure up as, 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 as a payment for that sin. Oh, glory to God. This is loving, isn't it? He came and died for a sin that he didn't commit. He came and died for your sin. Glory to God in the highest. If you look at 2 Corinthians 5 verse 27 and Romans 5 verse 8, you see how Jesus paid for your sin. Hallelujah. And more. His resurrection proved that his death was sufficient payment for your sin. He died and resurrected. Hallelujah, and that's the victory we have as Christians. Jesus died for our sin and he was resurrected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why Jesus is your Lord and he is your Savior. Can you now understand? You can now see clearly why 
my Jesus is your Savior. Hallelujah. This is why you have to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. I repeat, Christianity is not church attendance. Christianity is not singing and dancing in the choir, in the church choir. Christianity has nothing to do with uh, rituals and schedules. Nothing. It is about you having a personal relationship with God, with Jesus Christ. And how do you have this personal relationship with him? It's by accepting him as your personal Lord and Savior. This means putting your faith and trust in him and him alone. Hallelujah. And you got to thank him for giving you salvation. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, <laughs> glory to God, it is not late. I invite you now to do so. Since you have got to understand who is Jesus and why you should receive him as your personal Lord and Savior, I am inviting you to receive him now as your personal Lord and Savior if you've, you haven't done that before. This is your time. Come on. It is the right thing to do. You've got nothing absolutely to lose. If there is anything, it's gains and wins you will make. So accept Jesus now. Accepting Jesus is like opening the door of your heart to let him in. Perhaps he's been standing at the door of your heart knocking and say, hello, hello, let me in. You haven't paid attention because you're just busy doing your own stuff. So today and now is a wake up call for you. Receive Jesus now as your personal Lord and Savior by repeating this prayer after me, the prayer of salvation. And you have to mean it with all your heart. Do not lip say things. The things of the Lord are very, very important. And so repeat this prayer after me with all your heart. Make a decision. It's the best decision to make. And I promise you, you will be happy after this. Say, oh, Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, son of the living God. I believe Jesus died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe Jesus Christ is alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through you, Jesus Christ, I have eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Congratulations. Hallelujah. You are now a born again child of God. Blessings. Blessings. Congratulations once more. You have cast the celebration in heaven for the heavenly host to rejoice. They rejoice. For each soul that joins the family of God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have done the right thing. You've taken the best decision. Oh, glory to God in the highest. It is well with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so proud of you. I am proud of you. Now that you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, wow. Let's look at it this way. Because to me, it's like you've gotten a newborn baby. Wow, wow, wow. And you know, you would want to spend time with your newborn baby child. You would want to feed the child. You would want to, 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 to bathe the child. You would want to, to do everything with your newborn baby. I mean, that's your number one, number one person in your life, right? Isn't it? I mean, is there any one of you who would, wouldn't want to spend time with their child? Of course, none. Everyone would want to spend time with their child. Quality time. You would want to clothe your child. You would want to be the one to feed your child. You want to be the one to take your child to school. I mean, you wouldn't just want to have a minute alone without your child. Correct? Yes, yes, correct. So that is the kind of relationship Jesus is waiting and wanting to have with you. Unfortunately, most people, after receiving Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, that's it. I mean, you cannot have your child, for example, you don't spend time with your child. You don't communicate with your child. There is just no way you'll have a close and tight, good relationship with your child, right? Yes, there is no way you won't. The child doesn't know you. You doesn't know the child. You don't know the child's activities. The child doesn't know you, your ways. I mean, there are a lot of things there that are just so dodgy because you people don't spend time together. Can, 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 you, can you understand? Jesus wants that. When you, after receiving him in your life, you don't just place him there and be doing your own stuff. He has to be your best person, the person you want to spend every second of the day with, the person you want to discuss everything that concerns you, every, just everything, I mean all, not some, all. He wants to be your closest person. And when you fail to create this relationship correctly, it, it doesn't fit in, it doesn't work. That's where most Christians fail. You cannot have your child and you don't spend time with them. Spend time with God, spend time with Jesus. Jesus wants you to spend time with him just as you would want to spend with your newborn baby. I'm using a newborn baby as an example because, I mean, we know the joy that a newborn baby brings, right? We know that a newborn baby is tender and fragile and the mother takes proper care of their newborn baby. The mother doesn't want to even leave the child with some other person for one minute. Can, 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 can you understand what I'm saying here? That's how your relationship with Jesus has to be. If it's not like that, then th that's the problem. 
this is where the initial problem starts. Why am I talking about this? Because I have had a lot of discussions and I've received a lot of commentaries, inbox commentaries, regarding like, I'm a Christian, but why am I suffering? I'm a Christian, why am I broke? I'm struggling a lot, things are not working. This your God, you keep on talking about a loving God and, and a God who answers prayers. And oh, why am I not experiencing it? Because the connection is not properly made. Don't think Jesus is God, he is just there. And I am here, and when I want him, and then I walk up to him. Only when I want him, I have problems, and I go, eh, please, God, Jesus. No, it doesn't work like that. He has to be your number one personality. If you meet anybody who has met Jesus, their number one personality, you will see that the, the difference is clear. It is glaring. You see their life. Okay, with that said, you have to spend time with God. You have to create a relationship like mother and newborn baby. You have to create a relationship, a very intimate number one person in your life should be Jesus. Discuss issues. Don't run after other people and start asking them for solutions because he is in your life. You have accepted him. Now you keep him at a side like a dorm or deaf guard. No, he isn't. He wants to hear from you. He wants to know what's happening. He knows already that he wants you to, to be audible, to speak to him. And be with that conscience, that consciousness that he is there with you. He is your friend. Everywhere you go, he is there with you. Speak to him. Tell him things. Ask him for solutions. He'll give them to you. But if you do not have the consciousness that Jesus is active in the life in your life he lives here with you wherever you go he is there with you then that is where the problem begins there is no connection and then in that case each time you have a problem you run off to other people to ask the solution and then he goes like oh this my child doesn't know i'm here for him well anyway you can go look for your solution wherever you want and then you start getting things wrongly and things are not moving and you start crying. So create connection with God. Not, don't, do not joke about this. A solid connection. Your number one personality. You wake up from bed. It's Jesus. I am up today. Jesus. I want to go to town. I want to go do this. I'm going to go shopping today. He, I mean, like that. That's how it is. There are no two ways. It's not just prayer when prayer time comes. It's actively in love. You have to be actively in love with Jesus Christ. For you. That's how it goes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So how do you talk with him? How do you play with him? How do you spend time with this love of your life? Jesus Christ, how do you do all this? Someone may ask. Very good question. To make him part and parcel of your everyday activity, your everyday life. You have to make time daily to sit in his presence. Sit in God's presence. Say, Jesus, oh, I love you, Father. I have come in your presence. I just want us to have a conversation. And you start talking. Before you know it, you hear a replies. Yes, sit in his presence. 
make quiet moments and sit one on one with him. Hallelujah. And two, you've got to read your Bible daily. Read your Bible. Even if you do not understand, just read your Bible and see. But do not read it as, as a textbook or a novel. Before reading it, pray and tell him that, Lord, um, I want to spend time with you. And uh, I know this time is quality time and you are going to open the knowledge of my understanding and you're going to, to, to show me spiritual things and heavenly things. That's what you should see. Do not just pick your Bible up and start reading it like a novel. It isn't a novel at all. So you read your Bible regularly and you speak the words. You speak the words in the Bible. Don't just read it. There are points where you have to speak it out and speak it loud. Speak the words out. Hallelujah. Meditate on the word. Speak positively always. Never you accommodate negative thoughts, negative words. Never. Be positive. Always. Speak positively. In everything you do, be very positive. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God in the highest. Yeah. You have to be positive. You know, when you take time to meditate on the word of God, and you speak the word of God out loud, and you spend one-on-one -on -one time with your love, the love of your life, Jesus Christ, things will change completely. You wouldn't need any deliverance. You wouldn't need any prayer or, or sleeping in church. You wouldn't need someone to pray for you or deliver you. Things, the, the, things would just take their shape because at that point, the devil knows that your life is not a place for him to reside. He would pack his back and go. You wouldn't even need to chase him because you're spending your time regularly with God. That is it. That's the solution. Hosea 14 verse 2 in the Bible says, Take the word of God with you. Meaning what you want Speak it. Declare the word. Declare what you want. All things were created by God. By his word. Word of mouth. He spoke words. And things came to real. Crying and sleeping in church. Fasting. Day and night will not solve your problems. It wouldn't. And stop complaining about pain and illnesses and fever. Lack. And stop harboring negative thoughts. Talk positive. Think positive. Take your eyes and take your mouth off problems. Fix your eyes and your mouth on what you want. Say it. Declare it. Oh, I'm a multi-billionaire. Oh, I'm rich. I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. You have to say it. Always say what you want. If you are sick, say, Oh, 
Lord, I am blessed. Glory to God, I am blessed. Glory to God, I am rich. Hallelujah. God said words, words. That's what he did. And things were formed. So create your word with your mouth. Speak it out. What you want, say it. Create your good life with your mouth. First Corinthians 6 verse 17. Highlights on this point. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're great. You're great, Father. Thank you. Thank you for a moment like this one. Hallelujah. So, you have to pray regularly. Pray. And how do you pray? It's another question. There are certain prayers when you receive Jesus Christ and He's your personal Lord and Savior, you wouldn't have to make such prayers. For example, Oh God, help me. Oh God, take away this burden from me. I have fever. I am not well. Oh God, help me. Fire of the Holy Ghost, fall on my enemies. Oh, let them fall down and die. Oh, problem, Satan. Oh, Holy Ghost, fire upon Satan. Satan, Satan, Satan. Oh, Leah, Vaya. Oh, my life is say, Hey, God, help me. Stand up for me. Do this thing for me. That is not prayers. It's wrong prayers, wrong prayers, wrong. When you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, your prayers will be declarations. You declare what God has already said about you. You confirm it. That's what you do. Oh, glory to God in the highest. Oh, my Father, I give you glory because you're a good God. I know who I am and I know who my Father is. Hallelujah. I'm a winner. I'm a champion because the greater one believes in me. Hallelujah. I am that tree planted next to the rivers of waters that bears fruits in due season and everything about me prospers. Oh, glory, glory. I have everything I want, everything I require for life. My father has already given it to me. Oh, I'm a champion. Oh, I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. I am a lender to many nations. Ha <laughs> ha! I see revival in my life. I see revival in my family. I see prosperity. I see the light. Holy Masikia. Father, just as you asked Joseph, that Luke, Jacob, I'm sorry, that look as far as your eyes can see. All I've given it to you, hallelujah. Lord, I see financial breakthrough. Lord, I see spiritual revival in my family, in my life. Lord, thank you because you're good, because you have done it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That should be your kind of prayers. Do not start crying and fasting and not eating. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm sure you, you've understood what I'm saying. That should be your kind of prayers. There are certain prayers you would look at it from today. On WhatsApp, those circulated messages and forwarded messages, you will look at some of those prayers and be like, this is not a prayer for me. And you will shift it aside. Hallelujah! Because you've come to understand and you know the truth. Hallelujah. Those are not prayers for you. 
Yes, yes, that is it. Secondly, you have to choose your friends. Very important. After receiving Jesus, you have to choose your friends. People whose ways are not edifying, you have to stay away from them. Choose your friends. Prone yourself so that you'll bear good branches that will bear good fruits. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? You'll have to choose your friends correctly. Friends will uplift you. Friends who will say, do not worry, my friend. It is well with you. It will go perfectly well. Oh, I know what's happening here. Ah, you're a winner. You're a winner. Everything works together for your good. Those are the friends you need. You do not need a friend who will tell you, ah, what were you thinking about? Who has ever succeeded in that thing? And you thought you'd be the one to succeed, the first person? It's never going to happen. Just forget it. You see? They will kill your vision. Hallelujah. Choose your friends correctly. Wow, wow. I remember I was in a situation in Cape Town, South Africa. And I just needed someone to encourage me. I have all the encouragement in my head, in my mouth, that I just needed someone to tell me something. And I met this, this woman. And she told me, child of God, if there is anyone to have that scholarship, it's you. It is you. I mean, who else? The children of, of the devil? The children who do not know God? No, it is you. And, and I don't know, it was such uh, an assurance, double assurance to me. Those words, you know, those are the kind of people you want around you. So choose your friends correctly. Don't choose people who will lead you to the wrong path. You have a lot of problems. You're beginning to understand, I'm sure you must have understood at this point why Christians, children of God, are struggling a lot, even more than those who do not know God. Can you see? These are the things. Have you made Jesus your number one friend, your number one, the love of your life? Meaning there is just no, no secret, nothing that you won't discuss with him and ask him for directions and solutions. Have you made him? Do you pray correctly? Do you go binding the devil day and night? Do you go fighting battles that Jesus had already won on the cross for you? Do you go fighting, refighting those same battles? Can you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah, that is it. So, you have to sing praise and worship songs to God on a daily basis. Sing to your Father. Praise His holy name. Throw your hands up in the air. Your holy hands, throw them up in the air. Give glory and thanks to him. Oh, my Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your holy name. Thank him. Thank him every day. Thank him in the morning. Thank him in the evening. Let him know that you are aware that he is with you. That's what you do. Oh, glory. Thank you, Father. I thank you so, so much for this moment. For your children, you who is watching, you have to connect with God. We've just discussed about receiving Jesus. We've talked about why you must receive Jesus Christ in your life. We've said he is your savior and we've discussed why he is your savior. 
and we've discussed that it is your savior you've received him he is your savior how do you now live with your savior you live with your savior as your lover he's the number one person in your life and we create a connection between mother and their newborn baby how mothers would want to connect with their newborn baby 24 7 that intimate relationship that's the relationship jesus is waiting to have with you that's the relationship jesus wants to have with you so if you've been that christian who always complains that things are not going well things are not happening i'm struggling i'm in difficulties it's because you haven't created that connection correctly you've taken it for granted until you make jesus the love of your life and the number one person in your life it's not going to work out it's not trust me it's not what i'm telling you it's a tried and tested solution it's a tried and proven formula to success in life. Yes, trust me. Okay, um, I'm going to sing you uh, this song. I, uh, the song is titled, My One and Only. And this song is uh, amongst the, the list of songs that I'm planning to produce uh, the second album, the second Life Changes album, gospel album. This song is one of the songs. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing it quickly to you. We have some few minutes before we close. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. You are great. You see through me. You talk through me. You walk through me. I am blessed. You act through me. You think through me, yeah, yeah. You hear through me. I am blessed, so blessed I am. Because the greater one lives in me. The greater one lives in me. The greater one lives in me. I can do all things. I just know it all because the greater one lives in me. The greater one lives in me. Hallelujah. The greater one lives in me. I can do all things. I just know it all because the greater one lives in me. The greater one lives in you. The greater one lives in you. You can do all things. You just know it all because the greater one lives in you. You have answers to every problem because the greater one lives in you. He can act in you. He directs you. He is the greater one that lives in you. Hallelujah. Sing it. The greater one lives in you. The greater one lives in you. You can do all things. You just know it all because the greater one lives in you. You are the light 
of this world. You are the salt of this earth. You are the lender to many nations because the greater one lives in you. Hallelujah. Sing it. The greater one lives in you. The greater one lives in you. You can do all things. You just know it all because the greater one lives in you. You are a winner. You are a champion because the greater one lives in you. You can do all things. You just know it all because the greater one lives in you. Sing it. The greater one. Oh yeah, the greater one, because the greater one lives in you. You can do all things, you just know it all, because the greater one lives in you. You are productive, you are fruitful in every aspect of your life. You are a city built on a hilltop because the greater one lives in you. Hallelujah. The greater one lives in you. The greater one lives in you. You can do all things. You just know it all because the greater one lives in you. You are victorious. You are a conqueror because the greater one lives in you. You are a sea planet next to the rivers because the greater one lives in you. Hallelujah. The greater one. Oh yeah, the greater one because the greater one lives in you. You can do all things. You just know it all because the greater one lives in you. You are great. So great you are because the greater one lives in you. You can do all things. You just know it all because the greater one lives in you. Glory. Greater one lives in you. The greater one lives in you. You can do all things. You just know it all because the greater one lives in you. Does the greater one lives in you? The greater one lives in you. The greater one lives. He lives and acts in you. Greater one lives in you. Hallelujah. The greater one lives in you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The greater one lives in you. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I thank you so, so much. Glory to his holy name. I'm going to pray quickly to close this session. This is the sixth session ever since we started the Life Changes show, live on Facebook Live. Hallelujah. So I pray for my brother, pray for my sister, you who is watching, you who is connected, that the Lord has blessed you. He has blessed you. He has put in a new life in your, your, your family. He has opened doors in your family. He has given you everything that you require for life. You are a winner. You are a champion and you should know that everything that you're seeing now, even small, because greater things are yet to come in your life. He has opened spiritual revival in your life, in your family.
Everything that looks dark, he has made it open and wide because he has already taken you from that position of darkness and he has brought you into his marvelous light. Oh, I thank the name of the Lord for your life because it is well with you. It is well with everything concerning you. It is well with your family. Hallelujah. Mare Sante Rico Sorohodo. We are serving a living God. Thank you, people of God, for joining. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. If you just connect it now, this is Life Changes Show. We meet on this platform each Saturday night, 10 p.m. French time. And we are Life Changes Gospel Music Ministry. We talk about God. We preach the word of God. Everything concerning Christianity and everything concerning you. We talk about people and how God has upgraded their lives. Faithful people. And we expose the goodness of God in people's lives. That's what we do here. So if you have a testimony or you have a story to tell about something that God has done in your life or how you have made a difference in someone's life or in your community or you know of someone who has made a difference in their community, you're welcome. This is the place to talk about that. You can email me with these stories on M A. K W O eight two at gmail dot com. You can email me with testimonies and stories that you want to share so that we glorify the name of the Lord. And if you have uh, something to write that you you think we should write about it and make it known. Do not hesitate to contact me on this email. This is my telephone number. I'll give it to you straight away. It's 0033 And uh, if should you want to become a member of the Life Changes Gospel Music Ministry or you want to partner with us or you want to make a donation or you want to join our fan club or you want to do shopping on our online store, you just have to go to www. I'm going to write it here straight away. You go to www.nakambele.org if you want to make a donation. Hallelujah. Thank you all for watching. God bless you richly and abundantly. Hallelujah. So we're going to be same place, same time, Saturday next week. I bless the name of the Lord for your life. Hallelujah. And do not hesitate to visit our YouTube channel for more videos on teachings of the gospel of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I stretch my arms towards your needs. Everything that you desire, you have received it in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord says whatever thing you ask from him, in his name, you shall receive it. And I say you have received it. I confirm and I declare that every of your heart desires every of your need he has already met it hallelujah hallelujah i glorify you father because you are great in your children's life 
you are great in everything that concerns them you are great their families you are just so great and mighty in their lives in the name of jesus christ amen